They judge you, they judge Christ. God speed for women's rights. They judge you, they judge Christ. God speed for women's rights. They judge you, they judge Christ. God speed for women's rights. They judge you, they judge Christ. God speed for women's rights. So Kendrick Lamar, he performed at the Glastonbury Festival, which they had this year, and we saw him with this display of a crown of thorns, and we seen him with the blood uh, all over the, as he did his performance, which I guess was him trying to be symbolic of Christ. And we're going to talk about whether or not that was offensive maybe to Christians. Was it blasphemous? Was it a mockery of Jesus Christ? Or was it just flat out deception? And that's what we're going to get into with this video. But do me a quick favor. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future notifications. And so we're going to get into this topic and I'm going to give my thoughts on it. But I wanted to start off by going through some of the earlier parts, basically of this performance where he was talking. The only reason why I wrote Mr. Morale because everybody's going through so. And this next record I want to perform is my favorite record, Off That Out. It's the reason, the true reason, the true meaning of imperfection. The song he performs that we got the initial early clip from was from the song Savior. Now with the song Savior, he kind of went on a tangent where he said the God speed for women's rights. Uh, they uh, judge you, they judge Christ line. And so I think it's interesting some, some of how he kind of prefaces all of those things that come after. No matter what you're going through, imperfection is beautiful. I wear this crown, they judge Christ. They judge you. They judge Christ. They judge you. They judge Christ. So he says, they judge you, they judge Christ. Imperfection is beautiful. And so he connects him wearing the crown of Jesus saying that they judged Jesus, which I don't get the connection of um, imperf imperfection being beautiful. They didn't judge Jesus for imperfection. So I'm not quite sure I understand where he's coming from with this part. I know he's saying that's why he wears this crown. I don't see the full connection, but um, let's continue. I wear this as a representation so you'll never forget one of the greatest prophets that ever walked the earth. They judge you, they judge Christ. We're going to continue to try our best to walk in his image. Let's get it. He says we're going to try our best to walk in his image. So, to me this is so confusing. I'm not going to lie to you all. I think it's so confusing that he is using the imagery of Jesus Christ to get out this narrative of, you know, people that are so judgmental and then he talks about god speed for women's rights and he's saying like people are so judgmental of like imperfect people and the imperfection is beautiful and it's just weird it's like it's a very shallow message when you really like break it down and it also positions him in a weird way i mean like when you just look at the imagery of this like what does he mean by you know him showing the shedding of his blood because we understand biblically the blood of Jesus Christ has serious significance when it comes. He says that his blood was shed for the remission of our sin. So when we see him bleeding like this, it's super confusing because what is he trying to say? That like the blood, what is his blood shedding? Like, is he trying to identify with the with the judgment of Christ Jesus, with the sufferings of Jesus? Is he trying to equate what he has maybe gone through as a privileged artist? To the sufferings of Jesus Christ when he says they judge you they judge Christ God speak to women's rights so it's just it's just really man I'm not really fully getting the connection it just feels like he's trying to express a lot of different things while at the same time and it's so interesting because even in a song he talks about um, political correctness and things like that but then it's just he's trying to weave so much into this shallow understanding of Jesus to the point where it's almost deceptive because we understand that Jesus, his blood, again, going back to the blood, his blood was shed for the remission of our sin, which means the pardoning of our sin. So when you have Kendrick Lamar, you know, this blood being shed, identifying with the shedding of blood of Jesus is just completely erroneous. It's deceptive because he's only identifying with the fact that Jesus Christ was judged, but it's missing, it's neglecting a huge aspect of Jesus, which was Jesus was a perfect man. He lived as a perfect man without sin, but he was fully God and fully man. And him being the Messiah, the Christ, the true Christ, was judged for sin that did not belong to him. He was a man that was without sin, but he 
took upon himself. The scripture talks about he was made a curse for us. And you see, with Kendrick wearing this crown of thorns and trying to identify with that judgment, but the reality is, and that judgment is suffering, but the reality with that is, he's not, Kendrick isn't bearing anyone's sin. His blood isn't being shed. He's not taking upon anybody's sin. But then he goes on to say, I'm not your savior, while also, you know, giving out a message of virtue signaling, saying, you know, they judge you, they judge Christ. And giving out a message as far as women's rights, which we know has to do with the ruling, the overturning of Roe v. Wade. So I just don't fully, I'm having a hard time processing this social commentary. But I, what I want to say is I want to warn those that are followers of Jesus. If you're not a follower of Jesus, um, I'm not expecting of you to necessarily view this the same way that someone like myself would or other believers or followers of Jesus would view it. So this isn't necessarily for you. So I don't want you to take it the wrong way if you're a fan of Kendrick Lamar. and But those that are followers of Jesus, I feel like need a fair heated warning when it comes to this. Because I think this is very dangerous. And so I'm going to pull up this scripture here, which is in um, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And it says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. So very important, very important stuff here. And this goes on and on. But then it also talks about what a good servant of Jesus Christ is to do, which this entire book was written to Apostle Paul's protege, which was Timothy, who was Timothy. And he's saying, so he's giving him several instructions as far as how he is to lead God's people. And so he says, if you if you instruct the brethren in these things that he shared, you will be a good minister. And that includes this warning of the great apostasy that is to come, that those will depart from the faith. And we know that Kendrick Lamar, many people have attested to the fact that he, um, in many ways, faith was a huge aspect of his teenage years and his upbringing. He was brought up in a church. And he has a lot of different experiences with it. And he has professed faith in Christ. Whether or not you believe he was authentically a Christian, whether or not he truly believed and or has the spirit is a whole other conversation and debate. But we know that he was brought up in the church. We know that he considered himself a believer. Many people can attest to his music has taken many symbolic biblical references and been weaved into art. And so we know that there is a, at the bare minimum, we know that throughout Kendrick Lamar's life, he's been christ curious bare minimum whether he whether or not he was a true follower of christ or a true believer only god knows at the end of the day but but we know he's had he's kind of strayed away from that we saw with this new project that he strayed away from his faith he adopted this new age type of viewpoint of you know little g gods where everyone's a god type of theology now that he kind of ascribes to and that he promoted throughout his album or I should say is inspired by his therapist, which I believe his name is Eckhart Tolle. I think I'm saying it right. And he's a new age guy who believes in little G God theology that we're all God or we all share Christ or some type of weird stuff like that. And so there's a lot of new age type of stuff in this. And so we have to be very aware of that and be very honest about that. We understand that Paul says to Timothy that if you instruct the brethren on these things, you will be a good minister of Christ a true minister of Christ too, because I don't know what Kendrick Lamar is doing, but he's using G a distorted, a deceptive version of Jesus that didn't die for the forgiveness of sin. He just was a good man. He was a prophet that the people hated, a guy that spoke facts and yet the people killed him. Not our savior necessarily, but just a good man, a good prophet. But it says, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. Many of us, we have to carefully follow the doctrines of the scripture. Many of us have abandoned the scriptures or have not placed a priority on having a scriptural foundation for our faith. And we see that with Kendrick Lamar. Everything that he spewed up there sounds good, sounds cute, but it's not grounded in scriptural truth. It's not grounded in the message of repentance. We know Jesus preached the message of repentance. He said, for repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What did Acts two, in Acts 2, what was the first gospel message preached? After the gospel was preached, Apostle Peter said, repent and be baptized, a message of repentance. And so we can't leave that part out. And then it goes on to say, 
but reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. We must promote godliness and we must exercise ourselves toward godliness. That's what we need to do. And so this shallow Jesus that Kendrick Lamar has been promoting in both this album and now with this performance, they judge you, they judge Christ, Godspeed for freedom right. I mean, for women's rights. It just doesn't lead to salvation. It doesn't lead to repentance, any true change. It's just as saying nobody's perfect and imperfection is beautiful. So he was using the word imperfection, but really what he was getting down to is sin. Sin is beautiful. <laughs> A sinful lifestyle is beautiful is what he was basically getting to. Now I want to talk about this other passage that we have to understand as believers, that we can't be distorted. And these are all important messages that we have to internalize. And that is Romans chapter six, verse one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not, is what it says in the New King James Version. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? When scripture talks about us being dead to sin, it is referring to us repentance, referring to that repentance, that we have died to sin, that we've given up the former man or former woman, the old person, and we've turned away from sin. See, Jesus preached a message of turning away from wickedness, from a sinful lifestyle. Apostle Paul is preaching the same thing because of the grace of God. And that's where they judge you, they judge Christ, fall short because, yes, judgment is one thing. But if your identity is not truly grounded in who Jesus is and what he has called for us to be, then it doesn't matter. It sounds good, but you, the salvation message is void. You just are acknowledging a good man was treated terribly and killed by his own people that awaited him as their Messiah. And he was killed by them. But that's not a message that's going to ultimately make a difference to anyone. So my prayer is, and I don't say this just to bash him, I just really feel for people that have been deceived by this new age stuff and these things that um, frame Jesus in a way that scriptures don't frame him. So those are my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts. Do me a favor before you head out, hit that thumbs up on this video. Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. Do you feel like this is deceptive and dangerous both to Christians and non-Christians that consume it? Let me know your thoughts. Aggressive with the message when I finesse. Yeah. Been trying to be a blessing since I had a lesson. Let's go. Been trying to serve the master with all my messes. And kicking it cause I'm messy but yeah. always getting contested. Yeah.